again so welcome again to cloud hero um this is uh one of the um events different events that gdg groups do uh, one of them is these competitions uh we also do um on multiple groups, um, we do study jams, uh, we do uh, events, uh, sessions around different topics uh, on the Google, Google Cloud Technologies myself, but it's, it's anything really. Um, but here, my focus uh, myself is on GCP, like uh, Thierry was saying, I'm a GDE Cloud expert, I am an authorized trainer uh, as well on Google Cloud. So the, uh, this is one of the things that we do as um, uh, community groups, this Cloud Hero event, just to introduce these topics, to get you excited about what can be done with this kind of these services. And then uh, later on, um, when you get to, uh, to technical sessions, to study jams, um, you get more uh, kind of uh, experience with that, you get more uh, skills. And, and so on and uh, so forth. But these events are like fun events where you get you to compete uh, in a game using one of the services. And our our service that we're going to be using in the game today is, is BigQuery. Uh, and we're going to use it for data analysis. So it kind of is an entry level just to get you uh, familiar with the product, with the platform, and uh, basically compete in a, in a fun uh, competition. So again, we did the introductions. Uh, Thierry is uh, the lead of the GD, GD organizer lead for uh, for uh, Le Mans group. Uh, I I deal with other two GDG groups, one in Leeds in the UK, one in um, UAE in Dubai. So I lead two groups, but I do help with uh, other groups across Europe, across the UK, uh, across the Middle East, the MENA region. Um, so the event agenda is going to be like this. So we already done the introductions and the welcome. We're going to we're going to introduce what is Cloud Hero. And then um, talk a little bit about BigQuery, just to to uh, to give you kind of a feel what this kind of product is about, what are the capabilities, what are the challenges. Uh, a kind of a serverless product in GCP like BigQuery came to to solve for really data engineers, data analysts, uh, machine learning engineers, because we're going to see some kind of machine learning capabilities there as well. So it, it's got capabilities for uh, different. Uh, experts in in the fields of data big data and uh, and ml uh, really um, and then we'll open the game for you guys uh, after that uh, which is going to be running for really two hours and a half with like three or four labs that you're going to be do uh, doing and um, we'll we'll finish off with uh, um, uh, congratulating the winners and um, have a wrap up and with that so housekeeping please Mute your microphone if you're not speaking. We can take questions uh, as well, but uh, other, other, other than that, if you can mute your mic, have control over that so we're not disturbing the delivery or disturbing others while they're doing the labs. Um, uh, the, the chat, if there is any question, put them in there, raise your hand so we've got kind of uh, organized and make sure that you are you already got that in email, sign up to the uh, uh, Cloud Skills Boost uh, in there. Let me just check here. Uh, Yes, so what is Cloud Hero? Uh, so Cloud Hero is like a, a competition. It's like an event where we get different people from different uh, areas to learn and engage in a competition. So, so you will be seeing a leaderboard as you go along through this uh, hands-on labs that you're going to be doing. And uh, the more you, you perform, the more you finish labs, the more you finish tasks, you get, uh, given, you get, you get given uh, points with that. So it's all about speed and accuracy. So you need to be very, very fast. You need to finish uh, the task very, very fast. And um, um, you can do, uh, I don't know if you're going to get time for, for to do that, but you can increase your score on the lab if you think that you can do it second time quicker than the first time you can do that. But maybe uh, leave that at, right at the end when you finish all the labs and you think you can do something very, very quickly, quickly than you did it the, the, the time before. You can, you can have a go with that as well. So again, so this is about uh, delivering hands-on training. You can upscale with the uh, with the bigger query uh, service in this case, and basically have fun and compete with others uh, during this learning journey. So, and the price is going to be twenty-five uh, dollars uh, Google Swag voucher uh, to to the first place on the leaderboard at the end of the of this live event. So uh, that's a really nice 
thing, a really nice price to to compete for. And you can you can use it to uh, to buy any of the uh, Google merchandise from your website. Um, again, so what we're going to be doing here, uh, the, the labs that we're going to be doing, uh, BigQuery, quick start, we're going to use it from command line. Uh, we're going to then increase a little bit of the technicality. We're going to move in, use a little bit of SQL in them. Uh, introduction to SQL for BigQuery and, and Cloud SQL, the second one. Uh, and uh, we're going to look and do some analysis on weather data with BigQuery. And then we do some visualization, our last lab with Data Studio to do dashboard uh, from our BigQuery analysis, visualize it in a really nice dashboard at the end. So again, um, this is going to be part of uh, the Cloud Skill Budget. So if you need to, uh, you already do the, uh, the Skill Boost. So the skill badges are a set of labs similar to what we're going to be doing in this competition. Um, so this is our next step here is to do this insights from data with BigQuery. Um, so what you will get when you register, you get some credits um, in order to do those labs. So there are come four, three labs, exploring e-commerce data set with SQL, troubleshooting some SQL errors, explore reports, again, dashboards and reports. And then this, you're going to see, we're going to talk about the quick labs is basically um, um, the instructions. You're going to give like the step-by-step -step guide, what you need to do in the labs. Uh, so you do get given the, the instructions, the screenshots um, is like uh, what you need to do. When you do the skill badge, you're going to get the, the very same thing. So you get some labs where you get uh, the complete instructions of how to do a particular task. But then uh, right at the end, just to challenge you with the challenge lab. So the challenge lab means um, you will get a scenario. You need to achieve um, some uh, BigQuery analysis without giving the tasks. So the tasks are going to be the expectation in here is uh, you would have learned already from the labs that you've done already in here and the labs that you've done in the um, in the in this game as well. Uh, so from that learning journey you would be doing this uh, insights from data with BigQuery challenge lab. And then when you do these four labs, you get given uh, this badge, a skill badge that you are an expert in insights for data with BigQuery that you can put on your uh, social media account, on your profile on LinkedIn. So it does add value to your profile. Okay. Um, Let's talk a little bit about BigQuery. What is BigQuery? Um, so BigQuery is a serverless data warehouse. Um, so usually when you are on premises, you might have like a cluster of servers that you will have to manage um, with, uh, with a, a query engine of some sort, with a lot of storage that you need to manage. Um, so, so this is a traditional data warehouse where you have to do a lot of tasks in order to manage the data warehouse itself. So you will have to monitor, you will have to look at performance tuning, utilization performance improvement, um, deployment, you need to deploy query engine, you need to pay for licenses as well, you need to do patching, uh, the scaling, that's when you need to do the scaling, um, and then the resource provisioning. So even when you do scaling, you add new servers, you add new, new storage to your uh, data warehouse, you need to reconfigure, you need to manage that, you need to monitor that. And uh, as a data warehouse or as a data analyst, uh, the expectation is either somebody else is doing that job for you, working closely with you, or is it part of your daily jobs as well? So what you get left with only 50% of time that you are focusing on your real job, uh, really the data analysis, getting insights from data, getting value, adding value to the business and, and so on and so forth. Whereas if you move to uh, BigQuery, which is a completely serverless, which means all you're going to get is a UI in the platform. You do your analysis there, link it to uh, Data Studio, to the dashboard. All the monitoring is there for you. The underlying infrastructure, this is fully managed for you and completely uh, uh, abstracted away from you. So you don't even have, a, uh, um, you don't have access to it whatsoever. You don't see what's what's running, where is this running. Uh, for you, as much as possible, you're just going to, you know, or load your data into a data set, have a UI, run queries, and do your analysis at a high scale. So all this time that you usually spend on premises to look after the infrastructure and do all those um, thankless jobs, I would call them in this day and age, you will be spending that time getting more insights, uh, doing something interesting, getting adding value, getting more value, getting more insight in data, um, and so on and so forth. So this is like a win-win situation when you move to uh, a serverless uh, service like BigQuery in here.
So here we, there is challenges, obviously, um, that BigQuery came to solve uh, scale for performance. So when you're dealing with to analyze high and complex data, uh, so especially when you're dealing with big data, we, when you are on premises, you probably have to do, or you definitely need to have a lot of upfront investments. So you buy service, you buy hardware storage, and from then on, you, you don't know going forward how your jobs are going to be. Sometimes you're going to have like big jobs that you need to run, maybe the service and the cluster that you have in place of, with, the, with the query engine can't, can't handle that scale that much. Um, so you need to have uh, later on to buy more servers, uh, more, uh, more storage. So it does take time. It's not there uh, available for you there and then. And then also, also when it deals with licenses, renewal costs, all that adds to the complexity of the analytics challenge that you have on premises. Um, and then capabilities for streaming data. Sometimes we need to do real-time real -time analysis. I need to see what's happening there. And then um, it's okay to do analytics in the past with uh, business intelligence, having a look at historical data. But sometimes I need to things that are happening there and then I need to make those decisions, add value to see what decision I can make for my business. I don't need to wait maybe 24 hours later wanting to collect that data at midnight and do a batch, a batch load my data and do analysis. That will be in some situations, some critical situations that are going to be um, really uh, um, a waste of time, really kind of um, um, lost that time window when I needed to make that decision. So it will be um, waste opportunities for business, for example, and uh, uh, leading to sometimes the wrong decisions that we need to make uh, for our business. And also lack of machine learning uh, and features and predictive insights. So what we mean by that, usually a data warehouse, it's used for historical data. So we look at the past and we make decisions based on historical data. We need to run complex queries, different situations here. But we're not looking. Uh, we're not look, uh, looking ahead of what we can do with that. So with the BigQuery, we've got some machine learning capabilities in order to do with only SQL statement, like we're going to see, be able to make uh, add predictive power to our data, having the ability to do uh, to make decisions in the future uh, with predictions uh, uh, of the uh, based on data that we have, so we can run machine learning algorithms and uh, to, to add this uh, kind of capability on top of that. And when it comes to security, maintenance, operational complexity, obviously this is always challenging. Like I said, there is kind of maybe 80% of that is an overhead when we are on premises, when we have to manage and maintain our uh, data analytics infrastructure. Whereas when you move into uh, BigQuery, which is serverless, security, management, maintenance, uh, all that complexity is taken away from us, is uh, all that overhead is managed by the service for us. And exactly that, so when it comes to scaling, for example, like I said, when you are on premises, you are having your own cluster. So you buy service upfront, you have to spend, uh, you have to do a lot of upfront investments. And sometimes when you are on your jobs, uh, sometimes you are underutilized, sometimes you are, you, there is uh, 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 compute memory um, kind of um, requirements memory and and cpu heavy workloads where the cluster can't deal with so we are in that case under provisioned so we need to uh, or over provisioned sometimes and under provisioned in some other times so when we are under provisioned uh, we are wasting time so are waiting for some jobs to finish in order to run another job or the job that we are running because we don't have enough cpu and memory we the jobs the analytics that we take in take longer time to wait, which can be critical to our business decisions that we need to make. And sometimes our jobs are not that much. So we have a lot of CPU and memory on our cluster, on our data warehouse doing nothing. So there's a lot of wastage in there. So that's kind of the challenges that we have usually on premises. And looking at the BigQuery architecture as a serverless service that's going to help with that challenge, how can it help us? So basically BigQuery, when we look at under the hood, what does it uh, um, consist of? Two services. There is storage that is completely uh, managed for us by um, Google, and there is compute, which has completely separated uh, with uh, in between a super fast network. We're talking about 1.3 petabit network in here 
this network that Google have basically done a lot of research over the years in order to achieve this kind of uh, technology with this networking where they can decouple storage and compute. And when you decouple storage and compute, what does that actually mean? It, uh, it means kind of very efficient scaling. So on premises, usually when you have the servers, you have the, the service constitute of CPU, memory and disk. So when you need to scale for storage, you need to add a new server, you need to reconfigure the cluster because the data sitting within that cluster. When you need to downscale as well, you need to move that data from that server that you need to downscale if you need to and copy it to another service. There's a lot of complexity into reconfiguration and optimization in there. Whereas we have storage and compute completely decoupled. If I need more store, if I need more compute for my data that I upload here, I don't need to uh, to reconfigure this. I don't, I don't need to shut down the server or the cluster in order to add more nodes. I'm just going to throw more CPU and memory because the data can travel very, very quickly over the lunch work. It doesn't, is not coupled with the storage in here. And BigQuery also gives you capabilities to stream data. It's got capability of streaming, not just batch. Uh, so you can load data in batch, but you can also stream in real time, do queries in real time and get the results in real time. And it's SQL compatible. You can have a UI just to run your queries. You can run it from the CLI. We're going to do this in the competition. If you have a, uh, an application that needs to leverage the BigQuery API, you've got REST API that are completely very, very well documented over seven languages for the client libraries in there as well. And this is what helps us to do. Like when you have this decoupling of storage and compute, like I said, if one job needs uh, a certain amount of CPU and memory, then I just give that amount of CPU memory. So you always have CPU in memory com uh, consumption exactly as what is allocated. You allocate exactly the same what you want. So from one query, you can run, um, let's say, uh, a number of uh, CPU and memory. If the next query that I'm going to run is more complex, it, it needs more CPU memory, This the BigQuery has got the intelligence to analyze the complexity of the query, the amount of data they're going to be analyzing, and it will give you CPU and memory accordingly. So you can see here, it scales accordingly. So we're never in that position that we've seen before, where we are under-provisioned or over-provisioned. Next time I have a small query that I need to run, okay, uh, I don't need CPU memory, so the system, the BigQuery system under the hood is going to give you the right amount of CPU memory because they're completely decoupled. I can just take on CPU memory, add more CPU and take away without having to reconfigure it. Do I have to shut down the system? And over time, I am all, always on-demand storage and compute according to what the consumption that is required. So what is BigQuery? An enterprise data warehouse uh, has got a lot of machine learning capabilities, uh, geospatial capabilities, so I can integrate it with uh, things like Google Maps. So if I have like my data points uh, with longitude and longitude, I can point them and in real time to see, for example, if I have my drivers pinging me their data, the location where they are, I can ping them on Google Maps and see in real time where they are, for example, fully managed serverless, so I don't have to run the underlying infrastructure. I can do SQL queries at, at scale. We're talking about petabytes, not terabytes or gigabytes. We're talking petabytes, billions of records if needs be. Encryption is there by default, so encryption is managed for us, and we, I can do real-time analytics, streaming, and so on and so forth. So again, automatic data transfer, I can bring data from wherever it, it might be. There's a lot of connectors that I can do that, bring the data into BigQuery, leverage the capabilities of uh, the, the BigQuery storage, which is super, super uh, efficient to run queries from there. But sometimes I can also do federated queries. So federated queries are useful if my data is changing all the time. So it doesn't make sense that I load the data to BigQuery and do the analysis there, because by the time I load my query to the BigQuery, uh, the, my data to the BigQuery storage, my data might be already changed here. So I'm not getting the right, time, uh, right data. So what I can do, I can do query the data where it sits so I can connect to Cloud SQL or uh, Google Sheets or Google Drive, where I can query the data where it's uh, at the, its own location. This is what we call federated queries. Um, and also we've got a lot of ML uh, capabilities. So again, here we can execute ML, uh, we can iterate on um, models in SQL BigQuery, automate machine learning tasks with hyperparameter tree tuning. So this is super, super useful for machine learning engineers and data analysts, uh, data scientists, sorry. So here you don't have to run any uh, code. It's completely codeless. You just run SQL statements. So uh, specific for BigQuery. So you can um, run 
um, a machine learning algorithm will just like uh, create model, specify what kind of model regression or whatever, and it will create. And then you do the training, you train that model with another SQL statement, and then you do prediction uh, and evaluation with another SQL statement. So four steps, four SQL statements, you'll be able to run uh, an end-to-end -end machine learning project in them. So this is what usually the architect looks like. So you've got data sources, you can, from anywhere you can bring data, you can collect the data, bring it through multiple things, uh, process that data, there is all the tools. This is what we call the end-to-end -end, uh, skeleton or uh, kind of uh, data architecture or data pipeline uh, in GCP. So you data sources, collect the data, uh, by PubSub or data transfer for batch, do transformation, ETLs with multiple products. We've got data flow, data proc, data prep, uh, store the data either in BigQuery or cloud storage. Like I said, BigQuery has got two components, storage and analytics. So we can store the data here for long term or cloud storage as blob and analyze the data. So we've got BigQuery analytics with uh, BigQuery ML as well in here. We've got also ML notebooks and then with BI and um, uh, analysis for with third party products we can dashboarding or uh, take it to the AI or Vertex AI uh, with this data when it's uh, analyzed, when it's cleansed to do machine learning model with it or extract it and take it to a third party product as well in there. Okay, so that's an overview of, uh, of BigQuery. Uh, let me see if there is any questions before we open the game and go through that. Questions? No? Okay. Let's crack on. Okay, so the Cloud Hero, um, we recommend use two browsers, a normal browser and, and a Cognito one. So the, the normal browser, this is where you're gonna open, you see the instructions of the lab. And the Cognito window, this is where you open the platform, the Google Cloud platform. So because each of these lab, they got different credentials. We give you the credentials, the username and password to access those. So they are separate. And then you've got the instructions to follow to see what, what you need to be done uh, in there. So, so you need, I need you to go to uh, cloudskillboost.google at, at, uh, now if you haven't done so. You sign in with the account that you joined this competition. And then you will be able to go to general. You can change, go to games, go to the game, put your player name in there update the settings. So let me show you what that is. So let me just open up the window there. Uh, so Tariq, would you be able to put that in the chat, that link? Yeah, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody will be going to the same thing in there. Mm, so once okay. you go there, what you uh, uh, this I'm is the, code, about... the, the, the access code. This, link, this is uh, the access code. So you, you have to uh, enter this, this access code. Yes. And then uh, yeah. I'm, I'm copying Copy. the link. One minute, please. There you go. Put it. So if you go there. Okay. Okay. This is the link. Yes. So, so if you go here. And what you need to go, you go to settings, down at settings, you can enter your player name in here. You can add your avatar, update that. So that's the first thing you need to do. You can change the language too. If you prefer yes. in French or in English, you can change the language. All right. Are we all good at that stage here? I want to be fair. I don't want to, you know, somebody starting before the others. So I need you to put, to be all at the same point. Okay. So once you do that, you update. And then you can go back to You 
It's going to ask you for the code. It will ask you to join, and when you join, you enter the code to join the game. So this is what's going to give you the credits in order to do the lab. Okay, if we are all good at this point, uh, make sure you don't have any kind of uh, spaces at the end or the beginning when you copy that code. If we can put a number one in the chat, so I know everybody is, in a, is okay before we move on. I think Leandro is saying that uh, the code does work for him. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe he copied the space at the end or something. This is what I'm saying. You need to make sure that you're copying the right. Yes, pay attention to don't copy any any character else, just uh, the code, or maybe you can read and and type later by later. <laughs> uh, should work. Should work. Just should personally, you... uh, I'm just tested. Uh, it works for me. Yeah. Anyone else has the problem? Are we all good? Yeah, okay, Richard, good for me too. Okay, nice. Okay. Thierry, can you see uh, who joined the game? Would we'll be able to see that? So Yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, I can so see how many who's joining okay. the game. Yes, um, I can, so if I do here, I can see it. only three. Uh, I can see ah, okay. nine. Sorry. nine. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yes. Leaderboard, I can see them now. Yeah. Okay, so whoever puts player uh, 504, <laughs> uh, 789. So I think you need to go back and change the settings. So if you go to, let me just go back here. <laughs> On whoever this put that. <laughs> yeah, you need to go to settings. Right, go down here, update your player name. So it will appear as, because later on, if you are a winner to get the $25 voucher, we will struggle to find out who that is. Okay, I think it's done. Okay. Okay, good stuff. Right. Okay, so next, let me just go back here. So once you do that, um, you will see the labs. And let me just take you in real what you should see. So you need to go to going back here. Um, go down, ready to play. Okay, our first lab is going to be BigQuery uh, Quick Start Command Line. Okay, again, it's about you're not going to be able to move to the next one without finishing anything. So, what, when you scroll down here, while you do these tasks, there is a check progress. So this needs to go green before we carry on the next stack. So the first thing, anyway, the first thing you need to do is to start lab. Like I said, every lab is going to go have the different credentials. For each lab, you get a username and password separate. So what you need to do, right click on open console, open link in incognito window. So right click. Open link in a cognito window. When you do that, it's going to copy the username for you already. So you don't have to copy that. And then you come back here and click on this button to copy the password. So it's easier, easier than going in here and Selecting because sometimes you add the character, you miss character. So to get the perfect copy, you do that, and then you enter that 
here, you paste that, next. And then you are in the platform. So in the platform, then you have to accept. So each lab you need to do this, each lab is gonna have a different different credential username password, just to be managed. That's why we are opening here in this incognito window. So you've got the, this is the console. So again, this is a real console. This is not simulation or anything. So you can access BigQuery two ways from here, BigQuery. You can type BigQuery in here. When you type BigQuery, you can select it as well. You can go from there. And like I said, it's completely serverless. You're gonna be using this to run your queries in this window in here. When they ask you about the Cloud Shell, this is where you enable Cloud Shell, because I think one of the steps is to use the Cloud Shell, which is going down here. So like I said, this is the hamburger menu. Activate the Cloud Shell, this is the window. So that one here, when they tell you activate Cloud Shell, this one is the Cloud Shell. This is, they're gonna ask you to run commands in here. So it's gonna, open the shell for you here and this is where you any commands they ask you to run you're going to be running them in this window here so that's what this activate shell is about and then if they ask you to uh, run any comments in there again you've got this button to copy and paste this button copy and paste any queries later on like to examine the schema, copy, run that in the shell, these commands in there, um, run the query. Again, this is where you're going to, uh, you can run that using the command line BQ. So you copy that running in the shell again, and you're gonna see the results. And so this one is all about running queries using the BigQuery shell command, creating tables, running queries, and the rest of it. Next, other labs, you're gonna be doing something on the UI. So you copy the uh, the queries in, in the UI in the next uh, lab. So again, this is about speed and accuracy to achieve the, uh, the score, to have a higher score in there. Okay, so let me switch back to this here. So again, Click the start, username and password. When you finish end the lab, make sure to click and once you're done, so it will make the scores for you as soon as you finish end lab. So you will get that. Okay, any questions? Uh, it ju just, uh, it's more precision about about the, the labs. Uh, when you finish labs, you have to, to go back to the homepage so don't click on what's next. At the end of the labs, we see at the right side, uh, a button where you wrote what's next. So if you click on that button, yeah. you will enter so, a, a paid session. So you have to yeah, go yeah. back uh, at the homepage to, to so start here, the Yes. So when you go at the end here, what we mean is congratulations, that's it. You don't have to, to go here. Just congratulations, end the lab, go back to your window and you need to go for lab number two. Yes. The second game, the second lab of the game. So you've got four, four labs to do. Yes. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay. And uh, I don't know if everyone has read the, the chat, but we advise you to read the entire labs before clicking on start, because to avoid wasting some time. Uh, because when you click on start, the, the 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 time starts to to count so you you lost time when you read the lab so try to finish reading the lab before clicking on start you will uh, gain more more time for the lab so good luck uh, to you all and hope to see you in around two hour and a half to get yeah. the, the leaderboard and we know who is the winner of the session. <laughs> exactly. And again, <laughs> points are earned by competing the steps and speed. So the more, the more you, you're quick, the more you get more points. So if you finish early all the labs, you can go back. You think that you can do a better timing on one of the labs. Your best score would be count as you can do five times. Don't <laughs> you have uh, five times, but 
be sure you end the lab. Uh, labs usually have checkpoints, like I said, to get maximum points, you need to have all the checkpoints green. Obviously, you need to complete all the steps. Uh, we will be displaying the, the, the leaderboard. So uh, Thierry is going to be showing that on the screen as we go along, refreshing that so you have an idea where you are. Um, and you can check also your progress in there uh, to see where you are in, in there. There is a, a check my progress in the box. I'm going to share the, the screen. Okay, there you go. Let's play, put your skills to test. Tiri, if you take over from here. Yes, I want to I'll stop sharing that. and... I'm trying to sign you to the, uh, to the game. Okay. Um, Good luck, everyone. Good luck, uh, everyone. Happy, happy gaming and happy learning. <laughs> okay, I'm sharing, I'm sharing the, the leaderboard. Okay. I'm stopping sharing. Be cool for that analysis. Okay, sure. Oh, one minute. Just have a chat with the Richard is taking this away. Okay, done. Oh my god, Richard. <laughs> Richard is almost yeah. done. Let's go. Okay. All right. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. See you soon. Is no longer um, in count to earn some prize for to the session. So thank you for taking part of this cloud hero. And let me share the scoreboard. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. So the winner of, of today, we have here the, the top 10 leaderboards. Uh, congratulations to all of you again. William uh, Mo Asim Badori and Donny. Uh, it's not it's the right order, but there's the right order. Congratulations to you all. And then up for William and Donny to, to see you at the top next time. Uh, as a reminder, we have the next session on August 6th. So don't forget to RSVP today to don't miss these opportunities. And then for more same, uh, I would just ask you to share your email address with me to get your, your $25 voucher to get uh, some Google Strike. Okay. so. As I said before, you have uh, for those who didn't have enough time to to complete all the labs, you, you can do it again, and then even if you have completed the lab, you can do it again to to get more experience about these cloud skills, and then to end the badge that you can share on your social media, of course. So thank you, all of you. I don't know if everyone, uh, anyone has a question about the session of today. You have some, you encounter some difficulties or some problem during the labs. So don't worry, you can ping me uh, on my LinkedIn or via my email address. Uh, it would be a pleasure for me to show some answers or to get some solution of your problem. So thank you for joining us today and see you for the next event. Goodbye.